Okay, how do you know if you are too fat or too skinny? Now, it is very important because there are health implications of being too fat or too skinny. And uh, you might be saying, it's not a big deal. I know myself, I see myself. I can simply look into the mirror or ask my family members or close friends or check the sizes of my clothes, if they're slim feet, if they're medium, large or extra large and know if I'm too fat or too skinny that will well all of these might not give you a correct assessment of your weight and you might not be sure if you're underweight or even malnourished and so on and so today in this video we will be looking at how to calculate your bmi body mass index to know if you are too fat or too skinny so that you can know how to adjust Hello, my name is Dr. Malik Harune King and on this YouTube channel, I supply you with practical tips to help you stay healthy, fit and happy and improve your personal performance and workplace productivity. And so if today's your first time here, consider hitting the subscribe button and turn on the notification icon so you will be the first to get my videos. Now, apart from what we have mentioned, we need a standard way of measuring your weight to know if you are too fat or too skinny and another problem is fat or slim means different things to different people in different culture so we need something that is objective and some people feel fat when in fact they are not and on the other hand some other fat people will never agree they are fat furthermore some people feel they are too slim and it's just a feeling so we need a standard way of measuring also you may say why not simply climb on a scale a weight scale to check your weight the problem with this is that two people might be of the same weight and while one is unhealthily fat the other based on his or her height is just okay and not at the risk of disease conditions as the other one with whom they are the same height now so two persons can be of the same weight one is healthy the other is unhealthy one is at the risk of developing um, a, a list of diseases and the other person is not at the risk it depends on several factors and that is because height matters so your height matters and we need a measurement system that takes our heights into consideration now what is bmi the bmi is defined as the body mass divided by the square of the body height don't worry i will talk about we'll mention some technical facts here but don't worry i'll break it down to practical terms that you can understand and apply so bmi is um, universally expressed in units of kilogram per meter square resulting from mass in kilograms and your height in meters right so therefore the body mass index is a simple calculation using your height and your weight and generally a BMI of 25.0 or more is overweight why healthy range is 18.5 to 24.9 don't worry we'll discuss more about this with time also it is important to note that BMI applies mostly to adults of 18 to 65 years even though we know that there are several modified versions that can be used for children apart from manually calculating it um, the BMI may also be determined using an app a mobile app or a calculator or a table or a chart and i'll be placing links to some of these below the bmi is an attempt to quantify the amount of body tissue your body mass right your muscles your fat and your bone and here are the commonly accepted ranges for bmi so if you are 18.5 you're underweight if you are 18.5 to 24.9 you are in the normal range if you are 25 to 29 you are overweight and if you are over 30 you're obese don't worry i'll teach you how to calculate all of these so you can easily categorize yourself bmis under 20 and over 25 have been associated with poorer health conditions and we will be listing some of these health conditions later on now however it is important to note that this 
categorization is the subject of some debates and granted there are some limitations with using BMI and we will discuss these limitations. So what are the consequences of having a high BMI? What are the consequences of elevated levels of BMI in adults? The BMI ranges are based on the relationship between body weight and disease and death. So it means by implication that your body weight can determine how predisposed you are to disease and even to death. A very low BMI can cause health problems including bone loss, decreased immune function and anemia. And overweight and obese individuals a higher risk of developing diseases like coronary artery disease, dyslipidemia, type 2 diabetes, gallbladder disease, hypertension, osteoarthritis, sleep apnea and sleep disorders, stroke and at least 10 cancers including endometrial cancer, breast cancer and colon cancer. Now among people who have never smoked, being overweight or being obese is associated with 51% increase in mortality. That's poorer health conditions compared with people who have always been of normal weight. So you see being overweight, being underweight or being obese is associated with increased risk of having poorer health. A new study, however, indicates that body fat, not BMI, body fat is more associated with some of the conditions we've listed above. And I'll be placing the link to that study in the description section below. Now, you can lower your body fat and get to a healthier weight by exercising regularly. And apart from that, you should follow some certain healthy diet habits such as eating only when you're hungry, eating mindfully when you're eating, you're fully conscious, you're mindful and choosing a diet that is rich in whole unprocessed foods and also doing intermittent fasting. Now, by the way, I'll be placing a link to an extensive video I did on intermittent fasting in the description section below. You may also benefit from nutritional counseling. A dietitian can teach you which foods to eat and how much food you should eat in order to lose weight. Now, just as a high BMI can cause health problems, so can a very low BMI. Having a low BMI or lacking sufficient body fat may lead to bone loss, decreased immune function, heart problems, iron deficiency anemia. So if you have a low BMI, discuss your weight with your doctor and if needed, increasing the amount of the food you eat each day or reducing the amount of fat burning exercise you do can help you to gain weight. And I did an extensive video on how to gain weight in a healthy way and I'll be placing the link to the video in the description section below. A dietitian can also help you learn how to gain weight in a healthy way. So let's look at some of the limitations of BMI. Now, the major limitation is that it does not differentiate between muscle mass and fat mass. So it doesn't differentiate if your weight is due to high muscle mass or high fat mass. And we know that muscle mass is healthy while fat mass is unhealthy. BMI also ignores variation in physical characteristics. Now, while BMI can be useful in screening children and adults for body weight problems, it does have its limits. And that's what we're talking about. Now, BMI may overestimate the amount of body fat in athletes and other people who have muscular bodies. It may also underestimate the amount of body fat in older adults and other people who have lost muscle mass. Now, don't worry so much about some of this terminology, but you shouldn't use BMI or a BMI calculator if you are a muscle builder, if you're a long distance athlete, if you're a pregnant woman, if you're elderly or you're a young child. Now, this is because the BMI does not take account of whether the as if the weight is due to muscle or fat, as we earlier mentioned. Those with a higher muscle mass, such as athletes, may have high BMI, but they may not have the corresponding greater health risk that is associated with high BMI. I hope it's understood. So if you are pregnant, you are athlete, you are muscular, you are young, or you are elderly, your BMI may not give correct picture of the health risk. Those with a lower muscle mass, such as children who have not completed their growth, or elderly who may be losing some muscles, may have low BMI. During pregnancy and lactation, 
a woman's body composition changes rapidly and so using bmi is also not appropriate and we have alternatives like the waist circumference like waist to height ratio and waist to hip ratio and things like the modified body mass index and others you could try any of those how to calculate your bmi the bmi is a mathematical calculation and it is very simple to calculate and even if you are poor in mathematics don't worry i have a way to help you basically your bmi is your weight divided by the square of your height it is that simple so number one step number one measure your weight in kilograms not in pounds or any other unit number two measure your height in meters not in feet or any other unit number three now the height you got in step two should be squared you square your height by multiplying your height by itself then step number four you divide your weight from step number one by your the square of your height you got from step number three i hope you understand now what if your measurements are in pounds and in feet it's simple you have to convert it to kilograms and meters first now let's do it you first you multiply your weight in pounds by 0.45 that's the metric conversion factor for weight so if for example your weight is 125 pounds you multiply 125 pounds by 0.45 in order to get your weight in kilograms that's number one that's you determine your weight in kilograms number two you determine your height in meters so you multiply the height you have in inches and feet by 0.025 that is the metric conversion for height so for example if your height is 5 feet 3 inches you multiply it by 0.025 to get your height in meters so your first step is to get your weight in kg in kilograms and your second step is to get your height in meters the third step is to square your height so your height you got in meters squared so if your height is 1.575 you square it by multiplying the height by itself 1.575 times 1.575 to get your height squared so the fourth step is to divide your answer from step one by your answer for step three so you divide your weight in kilograms by the square of your height i hope that is clear if you get that then you have to like for example for this calculation this example we did the bmi is 22.7 so using your the calculated bmi you now compared with the standard to know if you are underweight if you are normal weight or if you are overweight or obese so you use your calculated bmi to know where you fall to in order to know if you're underweight normal weight overweight obese so that you can adjust appropriately because we've mentioned some of the health risks that are associated with being underweight being overweight or being obese i hope that is clear so now it's your turn try it out take your measurements and calculate using the formula of height of weight divided by height squared or if you're still confused you could use online calculators and charts yes take charge of your health and happiness